The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Palmer, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, we're here to talk about uh, budgets. So let's talk about the budgets of American families and the budgets of American small towns and rural communities and uh, how your uh, department and this administration's policies have impacted those budgets. Uh, December of 2020, the average price for a gallon of gas was $2.14. Today it's $4. That's a difference of $1.86 a gallon. Considering that the uh, average person consumes a little over 650 gallons of gas per year, that's over $1,200 that they're having to pay uh, in additional cost just for gasoline for the car. That doesn't take into account the fact that the uh, U.S. Census Bureau reported that one of every four, fully a quarter of all families, households in the United States had reduced what they were spending on food and medicine in order to pay their household utility bills. Uh, we've seen the price of food go up. And, and what I want to point out is that energy cost is the single most inflationary component of the entire economy. There's an energy cost in everything. Uh, everything that we've eaten, everything that we consumed this morning, today, has an energy cost. And I just want to ask you, uh, what did you pay for the last tank of gas that, that you put in your vehicle? Do you, do, does your personal vehicle use gas? My personal vehicle is located in California, and I paid close to, well, actually, my personal vehicle is electric, but the, uh, my daughter's vehicle who's with us paid close to $5 a gallon. Yeah. It's expensive. Well, they're paying 462 in Winslow, Arizona. They're paying 494 in Caliente, Nevada. Uh, in North Conway, New Hampshire, it's it's 4.29. In Benton Harbor, Michigan, your former state, it's almost four dollars. Uh, Milford, Pennsylvania, it's 4.25. People are paying high, high prices for gas. And what I want to ask you is, your your predecessor, one of your predecessors, in the Obama administration in 2015, made the comment that that it was Stephen Chu, by the way, uh, wanted to get gasoline prices up to to the same level. Uh, as they were paying in Europe. Had that been the case, it would have been $6 a gallon. Do you support that? No. Thank you for that answer. I also want to point out how this is impacting small towns. There's a city in, this, uh, in my district, um, Clanton, Alabama. Uh, we estimate they consume about 60, uh, people buy about 60,000 gallons of gas you know, in the city. When you consider that in December of, of 2020, uh, gas prices had gone up $2 a gallon uh, over what they were paying then. That's $120,000 that that small town no longer has to be spent in the local grocery stores and, and their local businesses on entertainment. These people aren't saving that money anymore. Does that concern you? Absolutely, it concerns well, why, me. Why are you pushing policies that are making life miserable for people? You have the, uh, the the power to unleash American energy, and I see you've got that American Lithuanian flag on on your lapel. Ukrainian, uh, I mean Ukrainian. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been in constant in contact with people on the ground and, and the government over there, and and I, I spoke to you uh, directly about them asking that you unleash what is probably right now the most powerful weapon in the arsenal of democracy. That's American energy. So, number one, totally agree with your concern about the price of gas. I think you're completely right uh, to focus on that because it is hurting people. The administration is very concerned about this too. Administrations across the world are concerned because the price of oil, which gas comes from, is traded on a global market. I work right in now, engineering, so I know. Well, a so lot right about now, how this Russia's actions have taken oil oh, off the market. Yes, sir. No, it has taken 1.5 million barrels off the market because countries like the United States have rightfully said we will not finance this you're, war. You're countries like Canada have said we will not finance this members war. Members of your party, the, my Democrat colleagues, held a hearing last October, called the CEO of Exxon a liar and demanded that they reduce production. We had a hearing just a few weeks ago in this committee and accuse them of, of reducing production so that they could increase prices. You can't have it both ways. Certainly. I worked in engineering. I have a pretty good understanding about how this works and what it costs to get gas, to get oil out of the ground, get it to a refinery, turn it into gasoline, and sell it to the public. 
And what your administration, what this administration is doing, what your agency is doing, is not doing the things they need to do to open up these resources, which would not only bring down the price of energy, but would help defeat Russia in Ukraine. With respect, sir, the talking points are not accurate. Yes, we have are. done everything we can to encourage the oil and gas community to increase supply at this moment. We've called upon them to do it. We have you, issued more the, permits under this these administration. Members demanded they reduce production last October. And this, then turn under this and, administration, and right now, there up. is a concern about supply because of the war. The war has caused prices no. to escalate, prices yes, sir, were by pulling oil well off the, the market. They were really I understand that's not what you want to believe, but the no. truth is, and if you ask any not, oil executive, you're misleading they say the American that it public. doesn't involve. You're misleading the American public. I yield back. Gentlemen, you're back. The chair 